Yeah, what's going on guys? Welcome to today's video where I'm going to be showing you how I make my Roblox thumbnails. This video has been highly requested from you guys, so I'm finally going to show you in depth how I make these beautiful masterpieces. I hope you guys find this video helpful, and if you do at any point, make sure to drop a like down below and comment if you would like me to make another in-depth tutorial on a Roblox Arsenal thumbnail or a Roblox horror game thumbnail. But all right, let's hop in and make a thumbnail. I think I'm going to show you guys how I made this one right here. It did pretty good view wise compared to my other weird videos. So let's hop in and I'm going to step by step recreate this for you. All right, so the three softwares I use for almost every single video's thumbnail is Photoshop, Blender, and Roblox Studio. There is some free Photoshop alternatives that I'll have linked in the description like GIMP and Paint.net. Blender's free, so I'll have that linked in the description. And Roblox Studio, pretty sure all of you should have that. If you don't for some odd reason, just go to roblox.com create and hit the start creating button. Okay, so first what we want to do is launch up a Roblox Studio, have it install it here, update, whatever you need to do. And we're going to export our model so we can actually animate it inside of Blender. Most of you probably have no idea what that means, but I'm going to show you right here, right now. Just open base plate. We're not going to make anything in this world anyway, but now we can do one of two things. We can either go in here and press test and then go play. And then we can export our avatar once we load in here. Wow, look at this, man. That's some fancy merch. He has one. Join my Roblox group link in the description. <laughs> All right, anyway, if you're trying to export your avatar once you've already made it in the avatar creator on the Roblox site, just go up here to workspace, click the drop down, right click on your username and go to export selection and just save it in a spot. You'll know you remember where it is. I have a blender folder on my hard drive and I'm just going to save this as avatar. You can call it whatever you want. But if you're not looking to animate your avatar, you're looking to animate something else for the thumbnail, go up here and hit view, hit the toolbox. So it brings up this little box down here. And in models, you want to search for, like, if you want a YouTuber's avatar in your thumbnail, you can just probably look up Tanker. I'm sure it'll come up here somewhere. Yeah, see, like, here's his old avatar, and then just right-click it, like we did before, hit Export Selection, and then I'm going to call it Tanker. Make sure you know where that is so we can use it later, and then you can just X out of this. Don't have to save it unless you really want to, but now we're going to start working inside of Blender. So to start a new project, you just want to hit General here. I'm going to open up the project I used to make the thumbnail. Oh my gosh. Okay, so things can get a little complicated here. Maybe a little tough. This takes probably the longest time out of all things we need to do here. Alright, so right off the bat to import what we exported out of Roblox Studio, you want to go up here to file, hit import, um, .obj, the wavefront, and we're going to find in our folder here what we named the selection. I'm going to put in the one of the Arsenal characters from the thumbnail I made. Okay, so now that we imported that in here, it might not be on your screen, so just scroll wheel out to zoom out. Select your character. It's just gonna be gray and to fix that go over here and hit this third little circle here And now we're gonna move over to this section of the screen hit this little camera I leave my render engine on Eevee make sure you have ambient occlusion Selected because that's gonna make it look so much better go down here and hit film and then hit transparent Check that so there's no background in it once we're finished and then go down here to the photo icon and hit ambient occlusion again to make it turn on all right, so now we're going to move our character down so it's not just floating in space. Make sure it's selected. Go over here and hit the move tool and then use the arrows to get where you need to go. You might need to zoom in a bit. My character, I think, exported a little weird because I just got it from a model. So for some reason, it's not centered. And I'm not a professional in any way in Blender. There's probably a hundred better ways to do what I'm doing right now, but this is how I do it. All right, so now it looks pretty centered. You'll probably have a camera and a light floating around here. You can just go over here to the light and hit delete. We're going to make a new light later. Also, I forgot to mention how to look around. It's primarily your middle mouse button, like zooming in and out. You hold it down to look like rotate left and right, and you can hold shift if you want to just look around like this. But back to the camera, usually it's rotated at a really wonky angle, so you want to just get the rotate tool, fix it how it should be, and then just move it so it's in front of your character and at the angle you would like it to be in your thumbnail. I have my finished animation actually hidden here. You can see what it looks like compared to the thumbnail right now. So now we're going to start animating, so make sure your character is once again selected. Go up here to where it says object mode, go down and hit edit mode, and it'll bring up a whole bunch of dots. Now these dots are pretty much on every corner of your character, so if you have a character with like a lot of hats or wings or something, there's going to be a lot there. But now comes the tricky part, so if you go ahead and select everything, it's not going to grab every single corner. You can see in the back here, these aren't highlighted. So if you go ahead and hit this little button, the two squares right up in the corner, and go ahead and select everything again. You can see that now it is completely highlighted. I always toggle it on and off if I want to get more precise, but 
All right, so let's try and select one of these arms here. You can see part of the leg actually got into the selection, so I'm gonna hold control and remove that. And that looks about right. You definitely want to zoom in and make sure you have everything in here actually selected. I'm going to turn that icon off so we can see inside of here better. And if you want more of a precise selection, you can actually hold down on the select tool option and you can have a circle or a lasso tool. But now that we have the arm selected, we should be able to rotate it and you can see how bad it will smear here. I'm actually going to undo that because I'm pretty sure the only thing I actually did in the thumbnail was lift her arms up just a bit. And it'll rotate her arm backwards too, you just want to center it. If we drag this dot right here back to where it should be, that'll help us clean things up a bit. You guys will probably need to do this as well if it's looking as messy as mine does. But okay, you're going to be facing it from this direction anyway. The thumbnails are really small, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. I'm going to do the same for this arm, then I'll show you how to do the head. Okay, so I think here I'm actually going to have to do less work than I did in Photoshop for this one, because I ended up having less smearing this time around. Now for the head, make sure this icon is selected once again. Get your selection tool, drag over the head, right to down where the chin goes. It's definitely gonna get some of the torso, but make sure to unselect this once you're done and just zoom in. Like I didn't even get this hair, so I'm gonna hold shift, drag over it. I saw that I got this icon I don't need, so I'm gonna hold control and get rid of that. Oh gosh, this does not look good from the back. Like I said, this takes time. You just have to go through and make sure everything is selected that you want, rotate it how you want, move it where you want. I'm pretty sure you can actually scale it here too. And once you render it, if it doesn't look good in Photoshop, you can just hop back in here and fix some things if you save your project. All right, I'm pretty sure that looks almost identical to my previous render here. So now it's time to add lights. So what you want to do, you come out of edit mode now, you can get back to object mode if you want to look at your character in all its beauty. Hit add or use the shortcut shift A. And go down here to light and you can either add a point, a sun, a spot, or an area light. A point light lights up a spherical area, I'm pretty sure the sun is self-explanatory. The spotlight is like if you're shining a flashlight on someone and the area light lights up everything inside of that square. You can change the color, the brightness, intensity of all these lights. So I'm going to go ahead and add a sun, but you guys can use whatever works for you. I'm going to put this above my character. I'm going to change the color by going down to this little light icon and make it like a, a shade of yellow almost. And you won't actually be able to see the light while you're rendering it. You want to actually go and press F12 and it'll render what your character... Oh my gosh, there's two. Wait, I'm going to delete the previous one real quick. Okay, so now that I removed the second render, you can see this is what it looks like through the camera's eyes with the sun on it. it does not look too good, so I'm going to go back and add a point light and tweak that to how I like it. Alright, and these things don't start off very bright, so you definitely probably want to crank the power of the watts up on these. And then just go back and press F12 to see how it looks. I think I definitely want to change the color of that sun because I'm not liking how that's looking. I also don't like where the camera is positioned, so I'm going to move that over just a little bit. If you don't want to render, but you just want to view what the camera sees, you want to press numpad 0, or if you're on a tank keyless keyboard or a 60% one, go up here to edit, go to preferences, key map, search for the camera, and then I have mine set to F1, just set it to whatever you want to, so you don't have to just keep rendering it, you just press that button. I wouldn't have it too far away from your character too, because then it might look bad once we put it into Photoshop, the quality might be too low. Alright, so when you get the lighting all fixed and how you want it to look, you want to go up here and hit image, save as, save in a folder you remember it, and name it something you remember it, I'm going to call this render2, then hit save as image, and then we can move over into Photoshop. Okay, so here's the finished product inside of Photoshop that we're going to try and recreate. I'm going to go ahead and hit file, new, make this 1280 by 720. You can do it 1920 by 1080 if you really want to. It really doesn't matter though because the thumbnails are so small. Call it whatever you want to. I'm just going to delete this right afterwards, so I'm going to keep it as entitled. And now we have this white background layer. What I like to do is right click on this and go to layer from background, press enter, and then select everything and delete it so it's just a transparent layer. And for the background, I just like going in the game I play during the video and taking a screenshot. If you're on Windows, hold the Windows button down, the Shift key, and the S button. And then you see it gets darker and pops up here, and then just drag what part you want to take a screenshot of. It'll pop up here, say Snip Saved Clipboard. Click this, and then save it. I'm going to copy the background I already have saved over to this window right here. And the first thing you're going to do with the background is go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, because you don't want the background to stick out too much. 
Set it to a blur you like. Mine's already blurred. And now let's import our animated character we made from Blender into Photoshop here by going to File, Open, and finding wherever you saved it. And now that it's in here, you can see how different it looks compared to this. This one, I actually did a hue and saturation effect to it to make it blue, so we're not both blue. That wouldn't make any sense. And I changed the face on it, which I'll also show you how to do. So get the selection tool and drag over your character and select all of it. Press Ctrl C to copy and paste it into your new document. Then you go up here and go to free transform and it's probably going to be too big for your canvas. I don't think mine's big enough so I'm going to make it just a tiny bit bigger and put it over about right here. But if your lighting looks dull like mine does, you want to go up here to image adjustments, brightness and contrast. You don't want to overdo this but definitely crank up your brightness and your contrast just a little bit. You can also go to image adjustment, you can go to exposure, you can go to like curves and mess around with this just a little bit. Now if you want to change your face on your character, we first have to get rid of this face. So I like using this tool called, where is it, right here called the clone tool. Hold alt down, drag, it'll select this color right here. And then when you move over, it's like it wasn't even there. Or you could just get the eyedropper tool, select the color and get the paintbrush and cover it up. Uh, I think that looks good. By the way, the, the magnifying glass is down here. I forgot to say that. But yeah, you don't have to go into too much detail here because you know how small the thumbnails are. You can just look up on Google a face. Like if you look up Roblox mad face, let's say I wanted to put a mad face on her. There's a whole bunch of these. A lot of them are transparent backgrounds. So you just copy and paste them right on. Here's my imported face. I'm going to go edit free transform. Put it about right in the middle. You might have to change the scale. Or if you want to go up here and go to edit transform, you can also change the perspective of it. And definitely while you're working, right click with the magnifying glass and hit zoom out a few times to see how the thumbnail will actually look on YouTube. Next, I'm going to change the color of her outfit again by getting the pen tool. And I'm going to select over everything that's red here. And then we're going to make it into a new layer. I'm not going to get her hair because I don't want her hair color to change with the whole outfit. I'm going to hit right click, hit layer via copy. Make sure your layer 1 was selected for that, by the way. Then go to image, adjustments, hue, and saturation. And let's change this to a blue, like, like an arsenal blue, not that kind of blue. There we go. I think that looks good. You can also change the saturation if you want to. And you can see her hands also got caught. So I'm going to get the pen tool again and draw an edge around the clothes so we can erase that part of the layer. So once you made the selection, right click and go to make selection. Just press enter. Go up back to the selection tool and then press delete. And then I'm going to do the same for this other hand. And then I'm going to go back to layer one and make a rough outline against these. There we go. So that's a new layer now. Then we go to image, adjustments, human saturation. And then we can find that blue once again. I think that looks just about right. Maybe turn the saturation down just a bit to match the rest of the outfit. And there we go. She is now blue team. If we want her to stick out a little bit, let's go back to layer one, hold shift and select all of these layers and press the group, the little folder icon. Now we're going to get into effects, so while the group's selected, we're going to press the effects button, then we're going to go to inner glow, make sure this is selected as white, and I usually like to go to precise on the technique. And then we can see how this looks if we just drag in, like if we go the whole way, that makes it look really weird. I don't like how this looks currently, so I'm going to drag down the opacity just a little bit. We just kind of want to make it look like she's glowing a little bit. And I think once we finish that, we're going to go up here and select the stroke button, and let's make a white stroke around here. I don't want it to be too big. I might actually lower it down to about here. And if it's really rough like it is right now, you can go in with the pen tool and make sure you have the right layer selected. Like I'm pretty sure if I go to level one right now, I can just make this look a little bit nicer. There we go. See, that? See how much smoother that looks compared to how it was before? You can do that with the rest of the body too, but I think I'm just going to turn the opacity down just a little bit so we can't really see those jagged lines. Plus, you got to remember this is going to be a thumbnail and it's going to be really small anyway. And back over to the finished product, I'm going to add this to link one over here to this draft we got going so far. I didn't make it in this video because I wanted to save some time. There we go. Okay, this delinquent is in position. I'm pretty sure it's just like, yeah, it's just like that one. I'm going to move the group of this character over this one because he is actually behind her. So that kind of helps with the depth. I'm going to copy all these effects by going, right clicking on the group, going to copy layer styles, right click on the layer five we have going and then hit paste layer style. I couldn't find it for some reason. And that's looking just a little bit better. I think I'm going to go up here to image adjustments and brightness and contrast because I didn't do 
any tweaking with this guy so far. I might adjust the exposure too. Yeah, the exposure can really brighten the character up. I might actually remove the stroke now that I'm thinking about it because sometimes it does not look good. Like, I think I'm gonna take that away. Take this stroke away too because, for, well, one, it's jagged. And two, I think that's gonna look better in the long run, especially with the blurred background. You can see the differences here between the two renders. But now, let's add a little bit of text like I did here. You don't have to add text. It's definitely better to leave the text to the title of the video, but I'm gonna add a little bit here because this was my 2v2 against ICT. So I wanna make sure they know who's who. So make sure you have the text tool selected and drag over where you want your text to be. Um, type out what you want the text to say. And then this font's really small, so I'm gonna press Control A to highlight all of this. Click and hold down on the two little T's and drag to the right to make it bigger. That font really sucks, so I'm gonna try and find a font that looks good. I think I used this font for the previous thumbnail. It's probably just gonna be black or white once you type it out the first time. So we're gonna go over here, make sure you have the right layer selected. Go down to the effects and you can either do a color overlay or a gradient overlay. I'm just gonna do gradient. And then click this right here. You might have a preset overlay, but what you wanna do is click the little squares at the bottom. Then go to color and make sure you have it selected what color you want. Then go to the other one hit color and then I like having it as a darker version of the color if we move this out of the way you can see what it looks like right now I'm just gonna make the bottom a little bit brighter so the gradient's not that tough you can also move these two squares around and the scale because that'll affect where they're at once we do that I'm gonna add a stroke make the stroke just a little bit bigger I think I'm gonna turn the opacity down too a bit then we go to drop shadow um, I like putting the spread the whole way up and then moving the distance so it's kind of a hard drop shadow. If you don't want it to look like that though, you can change the spread and the size and you can see how it looks. Also the opacity definitely helps. Another thing you can do with the text is if you highlight all of it, you go over to this A. You can make it bold, italic, underline it. I'm not going to do anything to mine though. And then we're going to do what we did earlier. We're going to right click on this copy layer styles and then right click on that paste layer style i'm gonna make this one blue and you know i actually like the full opacity on the stroke so let's fix that on this one. Oh, and i just realized something if we go back to the group of the character go to effects go to inner glow we can actually change the blend mode to overlay and now if you drag it up you can see how much of a difference that makes i think it looks better so i'm gonna leave it like that instead also do the same thing with the other character also, let's add a drop shadow to both of them like we did the text. Uh, I'm going to move the distance down so the size. Turn the opacity down just a little bit. You just really got to tweak it how you like it. It's definitely not going to be perfect in a few minutes. And now I think that looks pretty good. We can also change the uh, brightness or exposure and vibrance of the background if you really want to. But to tie everything up and put a bow on it, what I always like to do is add the Roblox logo like a lot of people do. All you have to do is search Roblox logo, uh, PNG, go to images, and it should have a transparent option for you. Yeah, this third picture has a transparent background. Once you import that into Photoshop, copy it, paste it into your new project, um, drag the layer up to the top so it's over everything else. And it's really big right now, so I'm going to go edit free transform, hold shift and scale it down to the right size. I also sometimes like putting it behind the characters, but I'm going to rotate it, drag it up just a little little bit more tweak it okay now so i don't like it just the plain red so i'm gonna go to here and go to fx color overlay make sure this is white and then i'm gonna add a stroke make sure this is red i like that red make the size a little bit bigger if we want to add a drop shadow too we can also do that i think that looks pretty good and I think that pretty much wraps it all up. Obviously, this is going to be a little bit different than yours. I have two different renders. This is an Arsenal thumbnail. If you want me to make an Arsenal thumbnail tutorial, I can also do that. But let me know how yours turns out. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Join my Discord link in the description and send me a photo of how your thumbnail turned out. If it turned out good, drop a like on this video or even if you learned anything at all. Also, before I forget to save this thumbnail, you want to go to File, Save As. Call it whatever you want and save it as a PNG. But I definitely hope this was helpful for you guys in any possible way. If you want to watch future videos, make sure to subscribe down below. Follow my Twitch if you would like to hop in the streams. And with that, I will now say bye bye <laughs>